do you know why stadiums are usually designed like this? Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure. But please, enlighten me. I'm always keen to learn. See, these two half circles here? It's curved in such a way so that athletes won't get muscle injuries from making sharp turns. Oh, that's pretty cool. And the overall oval shape also allows for another sports field to be placed inside the track. And it's also a good shape for building a spectator arena around the track. Oh, so that's interesting. By the way, uh, Prashanna, how long do you think the curved part of the track is? Hmm, actually, I'm also not sure how long the curved part is. It wasn't mentioned in the documentary. I only know that the curved sections have a diameter of 73.60 meters. Hmm. Then surely you can calculate the length of uh, one of the curved sections too. Remember, the curve is simply half of a circle. Oh yes, we just need to divide the circumference of the circle by half which is half of 2 times pi times r. Therefore, the circumference of half of the circle is 36.8 pi meters. Exactly. Now, in mathematics, a semicircle like what we just saw in this stadium is considered as a part of a circle and it is also called an arc. In this circle, we have two arcs, a minor arc and a major arc, in red and in blue respectively. Now my question to you is, how do you find the length of the minor arc AB? Hmm. Well, don't worry, I'm here to guide you. Thanks. So uh, do we need to start with the radius of the circle? Yes. Since the arc is a part of the circle, the ratio of the minor arc to the circumference is equal to the central angle to 360 degrees. Oh, so all I need to know is the central angle AOB so that I can work out the ratio. That's right. And here's the radius and the angle information for you. Then it should be easy. The circumference of the entire circle is 2 pi r, which is 6 pi meters. The arc's ratio to the entire circle is 100 divided by 360, which is 5 over 18. Hence, the length of the minor arc would be the ratio of arc times the circumference. And the length of the minor arc is calculated to be 5 over 3 times pi units. Very good. Looks like you have a good grasp on this topic. Now, if I asked you to find the area of the sector bounded by AOB, could you find it? Uh, area. Does it, again, use the same concept of ratios? Yep. And that should be a piece of cake. All right. Then let me give it a shot. So the area of a full circle is pi r squared. And I already know that the ratio of the sector AOB is 5 over 18. Hence, the area of the full circle is 9 pi unit square. So the area of the sector AOB would be the ratio of sector AOB times the area of the circle. And the area of the sector is 5 over 2 times pi unit square. Finding this helpful? We have additional learning resources to offer. For Cambridge IGCSE and ASA level subjects. Very good. That's correct. Now, would it shock you if I told you that there's another way to find the ratio of the arc and ratio of the sector? What do you mean? Well, in the previous example, you used 100 over 360 to find the ratio, right? Yes, because angles are measured in degrees, and one full circle is 360 degrees. Ah, but angles can also be measured in radians. Radians? What's that? 
like degree, the radian is a unit of measurement of an angle. One radian is an angle made by an arc of length equal to the radius, which equals 57.296 degrees. Wow! I always thought that the degree is the only unit for angle measurement. Well, temperature can be measured in degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, and the Kelvin. Likewise, angle can also be measured or expressed in more than one way. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, teacher, how do we convert degrees to radians? Easy. Just remember that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. Hmm. Hang on, teacher. 2 pi radians reminds me of 2 pi r, the circumference of a circle. Are they both related? Indeed, they are related. Look at this diagram. You see, theta is measured by the length of an arc, s, divided by the radius. Hence, if we set arc s to be the entire circle, then we get theta equals 2 pi r divided by r, which is 2 pi. That's why 360 degrees converts to 2 pi radians. Whoa, that's so cool. I didn't know it works that way. Hey, the wonders of mathematics. Anyway, to convert degrees to radians, we just have to multiply the degree with pi over 180 and radians to degree with 180 over pi. Hang on, let me check. 360 degrees would convert to 360 over 180 times pi. Yup, 360 degrees when converted is 2 pi radians. Good. Just take note of one important thing. If we used radians in our calculations for the previous questions, we have to do things slightly differently. Really? How so? Let's first look at the question in which we have to calculate the length of the minor arc. We know that central angle theta equal to 100 degree converts to 100 times pi over 180 radians. Hence, we get theta equal to 5 over 9 times pi radians. And we know that theta is equal to the arc AB divided by the radius. In other words, the length of the minor arc AB will be r times theta, which is 3 times 5 over 9 times pi. And we get 5 over 3 times pi units. As expected, the radian formula gives the same result as the degree formula for the arc length. Exactly. After all, it's the same circle with the same arc. Now, let's look at the question calculating the area of this segment again. This time, we will use radian in our calculations. We had earlier calculated that the area of the full circle is 9 pi unit squared. We had also calculated that theta equal to 5 over 9 times pi radians. Hence, the ratio of the segment to the whole circle would be 5 over 18. Notice that this ratio is exactly the same as 100 degrees over 360 degrees. Therefore, the area of the sector AOB would be the ratio of that sector times area of the circle. And as expected, the area of the sector is 5 over 2 times pi unit square. Register now for free 